Hi everyone, this week's video blog is about the 2021 City of Ottawa budget. It's an unprecedented year and there's been unprecedented challenges, yet the budget that's presented is very similar to previous year. While we've had a major reduction in revenue sources as well as this pandemic's affected all of us. Think of your personal budget, think of your priorities of spending this year alone, I bet they've changed. So it would be easy to just vote against the city budget, but I think there's fundamental elements that I want to highlight where I will dissent. On the housing front, every year we've continued to increase the amount of money we're spending in keeping people's in motels and shelters. We need to invest equal amount of dollars in new housing investments yearly. I'm also chair of Ottawa Community Housing. We have a 10 year plan to build 10,000 units. To do so, we need a yearly equity amount of $14 million to build 500 units every year. That, uh, that money can't be an accordion. We need regular yearly amounts to be able to sustain the growth and the renewal of the organization to build more affordable housing in in our city. Maybe now, you know, turning to council, I believe this is, we really have a political decision to make. Um, we have a plan in place. There's a financial plan coming forward at CPS uh, in March, but we can't afford to wait. The mayor spoke uh, in, in uh, the budget presentation earlier of house prices that are increasing by 15%. In a bizarre way, um, look, at, look at real estate. That's what increases. We have to invest our way out of some of the housing issues. The latest numbers we have is we have 13,000 plus residents that are on a waiting list for an affordable unit in Ottawa. Since I've been elected 10 years, that number has not decreased. Um, OCH is a strong part of that solution. We, near, we need year after year equity of around 13.1 million to, bu to build sustainably 5,000 units a year, 500 units a year to get us to, uh, to the goals that we've established. So, you know, I, my, my biggest struggle is not that we don't have a plan, is that we need political appetite to go into debt to fund new housing, to fund new housing, to get the operational pressures off. So, you know, I, I, I respect Wendy, Donna, and Steve Willis's work on affordable units, on all of the elements, but I can't support today uh, today's effort. $15 million uh, in, in, in housing is simply not enough. We have to match... Uh, what we're spending operationally in housing and shelter services and motels to at least get ourselves out of that growth pressure. And, 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 and yes, we have the right plan, but we need to spend it. On bylaw front, we have more and more calls every year for property standards, for maintenance, specifically in my community when you look at the numbers, yet we're not increasing the amount of, of staff members that are there dedicated to those responses. Communities feel left behind, we're slower in our response times. My specific is on bylaw. Bylaw needs additional FTEs. I see it constantly around uh, vacant housing, a uh, vacant house, uh, debris, uh, property standards, we're not able to respond effectively to residents' uh, concerns and, and protect neighborhoods. So I'll be dissenting on those items, Mr. Mayor. Transit fares. It'd be easy to just continue the status quo, specifically with the shortfall of revenue. But the entire model of revenues and fares for transit needs to be reviewed. And this year is the opportunity in my mind. I hear often from those who use the adult pass, who are making the choices of using transit. And some are making challenging decisions of couples not taking on the adult pass because of its cost. They, go, they revert back to the, auto, to the vehicle, which is less desirable, spe specifically for residents in urban environments. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. When we're talking about uh, a complicated budget uh, and an unprecedented year, that's exactly the kind of issue we're talking about here. We had a considerable uh, loss of revenue this year that really uh, puts us at risk here. The... Uh, the council is united on one point. We want to invest in uh, transit. We believe in transit. We believe that every resident of our city should have access to good transit. And that's why we're investing in the, the LRT, uh, three phases worth of it. However, our approach for, fi our approach for financing is uh, in a situation of conflict. Because when we look at the c cost of a pass, uh, uh, whether you be in the suburbs, 
Well, oh, you'll hear uh, people uh, say to you, if you're one of the councillors from there, when we think of a couple that have to buy two uh, adult passes and that it costs more than if both of them bought a car and drive, drove it to Centre Town and park, well, something is not uh, uh, kosher there. So I don't blame OC Transpo. It's up to us to find uh, creative solutions to finance the operational costs of OC Transpo precisely in order to uh, uh, reduce the pressure caused by a fair cost. We uh, have a list of all the costs, a community pass, the U pass, uh, and the, L the pass for seniors. And I think the intention was uh, precisely there. A good intention, but now the pressure is on the uh, standard adult pass. It's incredible the number of complaints uh, that uh, and the decisions that people have to take. What they uh, end up doing is they buy a car. We have less uh, uh, users, we have less ridership, and we wonder why we can't uh, uh, be competitive. So I'm going to vote against the increase in fares out of principle. I think that we just don't have a, a status quo budget. We shouldn't have one, and we have to reconsider our approach for the uh, financing of transit. And I would have hoped if it hadn't been uh, for the way the pro budget process uh, is set up that we have a, a subgroup of elected people to have that uh, look at that specific issue to bring along long-term solutions to bear in order to increase ridership uh, and make it more affordable for all your, your riders so i support uh, uh, the support i support the covid freeze but i think we should have a better overall look in particular for adult passes and finally on the other front of the police one of the elements through the pandemic is there's less calls to police. It's not that police is not relevant. It's not that there's not criminal activity. It's not that there's not uh, issues to resolve. But certainly when you look at the pan pandemic and the priority of funding, out of all of the groups that have identified new emerging needs, housing, public health, recreation for our youth and our seniors, so, uh, transit, so many other uh, elements, why would we give a, an increase to, to just the Ottawa police? That is bizarre to me, specifically in such an important budget year when we think of COVID and its impacts in this, on the city of Ottawa. This year's budget falls short. It falls short on meeting the objectives of the plans we've created for ourselves. Housing and homelessness, transit, social services, recreation. We have good plans. They need to be uh, hyper, hyper invested in, especially in a period of opportunities like the pandemic, where people are asking us to do things differently, to build more resiliency. I strongly believe that this year's budget in maintaining the status quo is an error.